we are now preparing for our 7 p.m. service. I am worshiping God, getting prepared to do what God has called me to do, and that is to give you a profound word from God. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you for coming in early. We're just getting into worship, setting the atmosphere that God may be glorified. Change me by terrible man. Change me, God. As we prepare now to get into the 7 p.m. virtual, thanking God for this day. Setting the atmosphere that God can be glorified. Tamra man, I do not own the rights to this music, but we are setting the atmosphere. I'm setting the atmosphere that in 2023, God, I need you to change me. Do it just for me. We're setting the atmosphere. Come on in. Come on in. I see you, Miss Harvey. Thank you, Valerie. Get ready for a word from God tonight at our 7 p.m. virtual church. Thank you so much. Come on in as we get ready for a word. As we get ready to hear the Spirit of the Lord prepare us for a crossover, an expectation, as Apostle Mike Grant said today. We're now preparing to be ready to set the atmosphere, to worship, to praise. Hello, Miss Lucy and Joseph. Thank you for coming in at the 7 p.m. virtual church. Come in the room. We're setting the atmosphere. We're excited. We're blessed. We're walking in the overflow. We're walking in the expectation of what God shall and will do. Change me as the atmosphere is being set just now for us to get ready. Get ready, T.D. Jason to say it best. Get ready, get ready. Thank you, Brother Hamilton. It's always good to have you uh, as we communicate throughout the year and converse. Thank you so much for what you're doing in the city. Thank you for joining us at our 7 p.m. virtual service. As we get ready to hear words of encouragement. Thank you. 701, we want to get ready. We want to make our minds ready. We want to prepare. Just like you're getting ready to cook, we want to prepare for a good meal. Set the table. Get the atmosphere ready. Make sure the dishes are in the right place. Thank y'all so much as we're going to wait for others to come on. Good to see you, Miss Donna, again. You joined us at our 12 noon. Thank you so much to Celestine's Brother Hamilton. Come on in. Like, you got a little button that you can share with somebody that need a word from God. We'll be with you about 15 minutes, no more than 20 minutes this evening. We're setting the atmosphere for the God of our Lord and Savior to have his way. What a wonderful God we serve, mighty God, all-knowing God, powerful God. He's sovereign. He can do what he wants when he wants to. You hear in the background, Tamla Man singing, Change Me, God. That's my testimony. I don't want to be the same tonight or tomorrow or January 15th or March 15th or April 3rd or April the 29th. I want to be a changed woman. Amen. I want God to change me from the inside. Thank y'all for joining. We're going to jump right in with prayer. And after prayer, I will be giving you all a word. Good to see you all. Amen. Good to see you all tonight, wherever you are. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much 
for joining us, Michael and Brandy Frazier. Thank y'all for joining us. I see you coming in uh, tonight. It's um, about 7.03. It's about three minutes past seven. So we're going to pray so I won't hold you long. Many of you will be getting up going to church in the morning, so I don't want to hold you long. But let us jump into this atmosphere of praise and worship. The Bible decreed that he who worshiped me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And that is a profound word that we were created to worship the Lord. Good to see you, Miss May and Janice. Good evening. The Lord God said it is good that we should set aside a time to worship the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. Let us just pray. And as I pray, wherever you are, begin to pray along with me. Begin to say and utter a prayer. Begin to meditate as I begin to pray. And we can touch and agree wherever you are in prayer tonight. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for all things and everything. Thank you for these precious people, technology. Thank you that your word go to and fro. Your word, God, is powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. And whoever will hear right now, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say to us, the church. And those that will be strolling on Facebook later on, uh, the next days to come, let the word be relevant. Let the word be revelation knowledge to each one of us. God, I know that your word will do exactly what it set out to do and that your word is all knowing. Your word is mighty and your word reach all people, the rich, the poor, or uh, your word reach men and women, children, your word reach all of us that have an open heart to receive what you say through your holy written word, the scripture, the Bible. We thank you, Lord, for this time together. We don't take it for granted. And Lord, I'm just a messenger that's bringing a profound message to your people tonight. Thank you for all things you will do. Our expectation is great. Lord, we know that you have called us many a call but few have been chosen. So God bless us and keep us and let your light shine upon each one of us that we, God, may go about and do the work of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and put some amens in there tonight. I see uh, Keita, thank you for joining us. I see D. Noel, hey D, thank you for joining tonight. And I want you all to hear real quickly what God is saying. I talked about it today on our uh, 12 noon, um, um, Facebook live. Hey, Miss Cynthia. Hey there, woman of God. I bless you tonight for joining us in our virtual church. Uh, I talked a little bit tonight and I feel pressing in my spirit, pressing in my mind, pressing on my heart that we have been mandated to do something that we have failed in past years as a church, as a body of Christ, as a people that God have anointed of us to do certain things in the kingdom of God, which is God's kingdom. And good to see all of you tonight again. I'm going to jump right in. And, and, and tonight we're going to come from John, the gospel of St. John, chapter number 15. John 15 and verse 1. And he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Listen to what he does. He'll take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Skip down to verse number um, eight. Verse number eight. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit, you shall be my disciples. And he said here, verse number eight, herein is my father glorified. That word means lifted up, John 15, one. And now I'm on verse number eight. Thank you, Donna. I'm on verse eight. It said, herein is my father glorified. He's glorified that you bear much fruit. He didn't say a little fruit, but you bear how much fruit? Much fruit. 
so shall you be my disciples. And the only way that we can be God's disciple is that we bear fruit. And I put it in my notes and I feel it in my spirit. We can't bear rotten fruit. Nobody leaves home and go to Publix and Winn-Dixie and the commissary or, or the Walmart, the neighborhood Walmart to pick and choose rotten fruit. We get uh, frustrated. We get a little upset when the fruit is not to our liking and fresh and attractive. But in the natural, we are drawn to fresh fruit. So God is saying that in this hour, he's looking for those to be his disciples that will bear fresh fruit. For the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. God is looking for somebody that he can make, amen, disciples. And then we look at the word disciple, it means one that will teach. One that is a teacher. And teaching does not always mean that you have a syllabus and you teach from a, a book or you teach from some type of outline. But our greatest teaching method in 2023 should be our lifestyle. It should be our godly example. We should know that people are watching the fruit that we bear. People don't want to so much see. Sinners don't want to so much see uh, 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 anything bad or rotten on your tree but they're looking for fresh fruit. They're not so much trying to hear a sermon and people fussing and telling them about their wrongness because every person that does wrong already know they're doing wrong, but they're looking at somebody that's walking in righteousness as much as we can, and they're looking for people, amen, they're looking for somebody like you all, amen, looking for somebody like myself that we have been godly examples that we're not walking in perfection, but we are walking in humility that God is with us. So he wants to make us disciples. He wants a ministry called discipleship. He wants a ministry where people can, uh, 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 we used to call it labor with you and people could tarry with you and train you. Amen. I, I fooled around a couple of, months ago and got a puppy and there were some things that I did not know about my sweet precious Bama that I had to train her. I had to teach her certain things and I had to uh, chastise her. I had to show her to the door and outside and it was not always convenient, but it was a way of teaching her, training her, showing her and Lord know for me, it was, uh, it was a trying time. It was patient that was being built up in me. It was uncomfortable hours getting up, making sure that she was taken care of. So in that, I'm not comparing us to animals, but I'm using a, a very relevant, uh, clear example of what it takes to disciple people. And the reason a lot of us, I'm just about done talking, do not want to disciple people because it takes a lot of time. But the Bible says, herein is my father glorified. God is not glorified by a new car. It was manufactured, sent to a dealership. The salesman was hired to sell a car to you that more than likely will have payments attached to it for the next three years, five years, whatever the terms of agreement, that does not glorify God. Amen. Your address where you live or the tag on, on your clothing does not glorify God or what school that you studied at, what's your degree level. But the way we glorify God, according to John 15 and 8, is that you bear much fruit. And I want to be so um, heavy with fruit. Listen to what I'm saying. Good to see you, Pastor Rice, again. The way I want to bear fruit, I want to have so much fruit on me that people can walk up and choose and pick fresh fruit at any time. I don't have to go and get ready, but I'm already walking heavy with fruit. Hallelujah. I'm already bearing the fruit. And, and Galatians talk about we all as believers should uh, walk in the fruit of the Spirit. We should walk in the fruit of the Spirit. We should bear fruit at all times. 
and that, that we are a chosen generation. We are of a royal priesthood, according to Peter. We are chosen, and then we are of a royal priesthood, and we glorify God that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. That's when we know that we are his disciples, and so we go out and make disciples. We compel disciples. And our flesh will tell us that I'm tired of talking to the same people. I agree with you. Maybe it's time to go fishing in another pond, another lake. It may be time to go deep sea fishing. Maybe you've been too shallow. It's time to cast your net on the other side. As he told his disciples, cast your net on the other side. And you, you'll catch some fish. Maybe God is calling you to another family. Another group of people, somebody that you're going to meet at Burger King getting your coffee, somebody that's going through some things that they don't feel comfortable talking to somebody else. Amen. That's where it is. Where we can go and make a difference and make disciples. Let's go to Matthew 28 and we're just about done. We talked about this at the 12th service and I'm going to hit on it a little bit more. Matthew 28 and verse 19 and 20. Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20. It's so good to see so many of you on the line today, seeing you online, streaming live, preparing for New Year's Day tomorrow, tonight midnight. We cross over if it be the Lord's will. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, disciple all nations, train all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Baptism is part of discipleship and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things Whatsoever I commanded you, as Jesus taught his 12 disciples, minus one, we know Judas, in this chapter, there was 11, and he told them, after I go away, I leave the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost, and then I need you to follow out this great commission. Somebody put in, in, in the um, comments, great commission. The great commission is I need you to go and I need you to go to all nations, amen, and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost and teaching them, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you and lo, I'm with you. He said, you will not go out by yourself. He said, I will be with you. He said, lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. And Jesus coined it by saying, amen. So when we go out to make disciples, church is a place of fellowship. Listen to me. It's a place of camaraderie, like-minded community, a like-minded gathering of people with the same mindset, believing in the same God, amen, and we come to church as a community of believers, but we go out to make disciples, glory, hallelujah, and then he said, I have given the power unto Jesus on earth, and he began to release that same power on his disciples, and therefore, we do not walk in our own power, thank God for that, but we walk in the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gives us wisdom. And the Bible talks about he gives us wisdom to the unlearned. You cannot go to a college university. You cannot go in a classroom or go online and Google uh, how to get wisdom. You can but only God is the one that releases wisdom upon us. Amen. And he said that we baptize them, making them. Listen what the Lord gave me a few minutes ago. And then I'm going to jump off 
and, 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 and let you all go on with the rest of your evening. He says this. He said, making disciples, amen, not make them. Catch what I just said. He said, making disciples, not to make them. Okay, Apostle. Okay, Dr. Alley. Okay, Delta. Explain that bite size. Explain it elementary style. We are to make disciples, but we cannot make them. In other words, we can lead people to Christ, introduce them to Christ, not to ourselves, not to our theories, our thoughts, or my opinion, and I don't like this and why it is, is lead people to the gospel, point them to Jesus Christ, because we cannot make them. We cannot make them. The old saying, you can lead a what? A horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. That's the same scenario or the same paradigm. We can only introduce people to the gospel. We can be fruit barriers and we can be ex examples and we can teach people. We can train them up. But we cannot make them. So our frustration can be released in 2023. Amen. That you can teach the gospel. You can be an example. You can be the fruit barrier. But we cannot, hallelujah, make them. So our challenge, we've got a lot of challenges going on. But the great commission is, thank you, Miss Lucy. The great commission, Miss Lucy, she, she put it in the comment box. Miss Donna put it in the comment box. The commission is that we go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's every man that you come in contact with. Everybody about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we baptize them in the name of the Father, not anybody else's name, the Son and of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Discipleship out of a pure place. The ministry of discipleship or discipling someone must be from a pure heart. Because it's going to take work. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time. It may even take a little finances or resources or repeating yourself. But as the sure as I'm talking to you tonight. God will be glorified at the end of the day. And that's the ultimate goal is that God will be glorified. Not myself, not the church, not you, not your grandchildren, not your auntie, but God will be glorified. Watch God do something great in 2023, but it will not come without work. It will not come without labor. It will not come without doing something that you've never done before, and that's to get out of our comfort zone. Thank you, Father. And compel those men and women to be born again. Not a church member, not a new member's class, not to brag and boast that we are growing and we are big and we are the greatest. It is to give my God the glory for being the Savior of the world. We just celebrated. We just celebrated his birth. And now it's time for us to go and tell people we serve a risen Christ. Amen. I don't want to prolong the time. I don't want to keep you because prayerfully everybody on the line is getting ready, getting ready, getting ready for worship in the morning, wherever you decide to go. Don't go empty handed. There's a requirement of your 10%. And an offering, 10 plus an offering, amen, and that you be present in what God is saying through the pastor, the preacher, the the minister, the messenger, the apostle, the man, the woman of God that he'll use to bring a word of God. And listen, you cannot hear the word without a preacher. And how can he preach unless he's been sent, sent from God, Amen. God is faithful, and he's going to do exactly what he said he would do. Let me pray for you. Let me lift you up. Hallelujah. Let me remind you of the greatness of God, not because it's a 
new year coming up. And certainly I am grateful if God graced me to see 2023. I am grateful for the things you ought to be grateful, but it's about God. Listen what it's about. God giving me and you, you and I, another chance to get it right, to be better than we were last year. Today is still 2022. And that we're going to make a conscious decision to do all we can while we can because there's a requirement, amen, and there's a mandate on our lives to tell the heathen, the sinners, the lost soul that Jesus is still alive and he's still blessing his people. Thank y'all. Let us pray. I see those hearts going up. Amen. Y'all are so encouraging uh, to see y'all the second service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to see all of you. And I'm thankful to be here to be able to give you this word of God. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you. Again, we bless you, we honor you, we lift you up, we magnify your name, we glorify your name. We have a heart for the people, we have a heart for ministry, we have hearts to see the lost be saved, sinners be converted. We have a heart, Lord, not to do the same thing and get the same results, but have a heart to see you change, shift, remove, uproot, bring into order that which is disordered, this are organized and discombobulated. We thank you that you'll bring everything into your divine order starting right now. And Lord, we thank you for a mind of submission, humility, and we walk not by, 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 by fear, but we walk by faith. We continue to walk, Father God, in the things of God, believing your report, which is yes and amen, believing that we are healed. And we're walking in our full healness and being made whole right now. We thank you right now that your word is powerful, sharper. Your word is a keeper. Your word is a protector. Psalms 91. We thank you, God, that you not only have kept us, but you have been our great provider. Thank you for being a forgiving God. Yes, a merciful God. And I pray for the people that thought it not robbery to come online, Facebook Live to hear a word, to be blessed. Not that it's a new word, but God, there's a need for help for relevant word right now. We thank you for what you're going to do, what you are doing. Thank you for my life. Thank you for what you poured on me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I have a heart for your people. I will have a heart for ministry and what we make happen. Hallelujah for another man. You decree you'll make it happen for us. We pray for all generations. You are multi-generational God. We pray for all races because there are no respect of person. We pray for everybody, leadership, Lord God. We pray for our president, vice president. We pray for the entire world, nation, and the earth because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell in it. Now we pray for those that will go out tonight and Lord, we pray safety over them in Jesus' name. We bind up any wrecks, accident. We bind up gun violence, shooting, murders, and killing right here in our neighborhood. And Lord, we ask for a blood covering over each one of them, each one of us right now. As we call ourselves celebrate, Lord, you are the only reason that we ought to celebrate for that. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. We honor you. We reverence you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what you do, go out and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord and how faithful God has been to you, your family, how God has made ways for you out of nowhere. Keep doing what you've been doing, but just take it up another level. What you do for the Lord will only last. It will only count in the final hour. God bless you. You know, like I say, I love you and I love you with the love of Christ. Don't give up on God. Because he didn't. Thank you, Lord. Give up on us. Have a good night. Abundant life. I'll see you in the morning at 10 a.m. Everybody else, whatever church you attend, make sure you're there on time. Ready to give God a high praise. Because he deserves it. Good night. Love you. Be safe. And whatever you do, keep God first in your life. Good night.